MCHS colleague Steve Schaffer, who included the images that I'm presenting today. This presentation has been principally illustrated by photographs and other images from the collections of the Milwaukee County Historical Society Research Library. MCHS is located in the former Second Ward Savings Bank on the corner of King Drive and Kilbourne Avenue in downtown Milwaukee. Also included are several clippings from the comprehensive database of the Milwaukee Journal and Sentinel newspapers, digitized and made available thanks to the Milwaukee Public Library. Many of the more recent photographs were taken by myself, Michael Barrera, at the 2022 Wisconsin State Fair. As a recent transplant to Wisconsin, arriving in June of last year, it was my first experience at the State Fair. A selection of public domain and freely licensed images from other sources appear as well, and each of them will be credited as it is shown. Today, the Wisconsin State Fair is an 11-day annual event that takes place at Wisconsin State Fair Park in West Dallas. It usually occurs in early August, although it occasionally begins in late July. The fair retains its historic focus on agricultural products, farming, and livestock, pictured here as a cow at the 2022 State Fair. However, over the years, concerts, various other forms of entertainment, and numerous fair foods have all become more important. In recent years, the State Fair draws more than 1 million visitors per year. Noting that it attracts people from all over the, all over the state, as well as from around the world, Albert Muchka, writing in his Images of America West Dallas book, describes the event as truly Wisconsin's party, quote unquote. The fair has evolved over the decades to match popular interests. In the late 19th century, for instance, the primary focus was on large farm machinery displays. In the 1920s, aviation demonstrations were popular. The 1940s were dominated by supporting the war effort and those on the home front during World War II. The 1950s focused on many popular entertainment acts, and creative new fair foods have been popular in recent decades. Inspired by this evolution over time, my, my presentation on the State Fair tells its story through the major events and developments that have occurred decade by decade. Pictured here is the horse bull at the 2022 State Fair using a vintage. In 1851, the first Wisconsin State Fair was held in Janesville on six acres of land along the banks of the Rock River. Pictured is the historical marker commemorating the event. That inaugural State Fair was a two-day event in October, attended by somewhere between 8,000 and 18,000 people, as estimates vary widely. Occurring just three years after statehood, it was reportedly the largest gathering in Wisconsin history to that point. This fair was sponsored by the, Wis by the State Agricultural Society, which was soliciting more paying members at the time. Admission costs 10 cents, equivalent to $3.81 today. That first year, the fair gained $570 in revenue against nearly $485 in expenses for a net profit of $85, just over $3,200 today. The first state fair was mostly comprised of displays of produce and other agricultural products. Among the major attractions were a 200 pound squash and a quarter acre plowing competition. The Milwaukee Sentinel even remarked that the 1851 State Fair was, quote unquote, an orderly affair without a single intoxicated man in the crowd. Between the first State Fair in 1851 and 1891, prior to its permanent location in West Dallas, the Wisconsin State Fair rotated between various locations in multiple cities. The cities and specific locations that have hosted the fair are as follows. Janesville, along the banks of the Rock River, has hosted six times between 1851 and 1877. Milwaukee's Cold Spring Race Course, on the site of the present-day Cold Spring Park residential neighborhood, hosted 15 times between 1852 and 1891. Watertown, along the banks of the Rock River, hosted once in 1853. Milwaukee Spring Street Grounds, pictured here on the site of, pre of the present-day Marquette University campus and Aurora Sinai Medical Center, hosted three times between 1854 and 1859. Madison's Brune Estate, 
on the site of present-day Camp Randall, hosted 10 times between 1858 and 1885. And finally, Fond du Lac, hosted twice in 1881 and 1882. Agriculture was the highlight of, of displays in the State Fair's first decade, the 1850s. The fair was held during early October during this era, much later than it is held today. Pictured here is a list of awards given at the 1855 State Fair in a clipping from the Milwaukee Sentinel. One of the highlights of the 1857 State Fair was the display of a 600 pound cheese. Abraham Lincoln visited the 1859 State Fair held that year at the Cold Spring Grounds in Milwaukee. There he made a speech as part of his presidential campaign. Pictured is the plaque marking the site of this speech, photographed by Milwaukee Magazine. In the 1860s, the State Fair began exhibiting more farming machinery. The fair was held during late September or early October during this decade. In 1860, 20-year-old future naturalist John Muir exhibited some of his inventions at the fair. Pictured is an excerpt from a 1915 Milwaukee Sentinel story about Muir. After the end of the Civil War, the, the 1868 fair featured a 20 horsepower steam engine, and the 1869 fair had a live firefighting demonstration during which firefighters put out fires set to boxes, barrels, and even a large wooden building. The 1861 State Fair, which was scheduled for Madison, was canceled due to the outbreak of the Civil War. The 1862 and 63 State Fairs, also scheduled for Madison, were similarly canceled because the fairgrounds, present-day Camp Randall, were being used to train new recruits who had volunteered to fight for the Union. Pictured is an 1861 story in the Sentinel about Camp Randall. These three consecutive years without a State Fair mark the first three times out of six total that the fair has ever been canceled. In the 1870s, agriculture remained at the forefront of the state fair. It was held during September during this decade. In the 19th century, the Wisconsin State Fair had a strong emphasis on agricultural exhibits and events. Since this time, however, the fair has shifted more toward popular entertainment in order to attract larger audiences. In 1871, the State Fair produced nearly $28,000 in revenue, over $675,000 today. That same year, over 2,000 livestock were entered into the competitions, setting a record. In 1875, the Wisconsin State Fair became the site of the first statewide dairy competition held anywhere in the United States, an event that was hosted by the Dairy Men's Association. That event is mentioned in this excerpt from a retrospective article published in 1893 in the Milwaukee Journal. In 1876, in celebration of the United States centennial, the Wisconsin State Fair was extended to 10 days in length. In 1878, when the fair was held at Camp Randall in Madison, sitting President Rutherford B. Hayes spoke to fairgoers. Pictured here is a poster from the 1879 fair, also held in Madison, promoting a grand balloon ascension, quote unquote. Farming equipment remained the major focus of the State Fair in the 1880s, and the fair itself remained scheduled in September throughout this decade. The emphasis on farming is clear from this 1888 article about the State Fair in the Milwaukee Journal. In 1880, former President Ulysses S. Grant attended the fair and addressed fairgoers. In 1885, a record number of entries into the fair caused event organizers to to proclaim that it was the best state fair held east of the Mississippi, quote unquote. In 1889, the first women's work show at the fair was held. Its popularity led to increased calls for selecting a permanent state fair site. Pictured as an 1889 newspaper advertisement for that year's state fair in the Milwaukee Journal. As early as 1854, the first suggestions of building a permanent fairgrounds had been discussed by officers of the, of the Wisconsin Agricultural Society. In 1891, the society selected West Dallas as the new permanent home for the state fair. To do this, it purchased what had previously been the, what had previously been the George Stevens Farm. Pictured here in the, left, in the center left bottom portion of this 1876 map of Wauwatosa Township, 
just north of the oval-shaped race course. On this property, the society built exhibition halls, a horse racing track with four barns for racehorses, and a 6,000-seat grandstand. The plot of land selected was on the north side of Greenfield Avenue, adjacent to Wauwatosa Township. The 1892 Wisconsin State Fair was the first held on these new fairgrounds in West Dallas. According to State Fair Marketing Director Kathleen O'Leary, West Dallas was chosen for multiple reasons. It was between Wisconsin's two largest cities, Milwaukee and Madison, had enough space at the time to build a major fairground and could provide enough hotel and boarding capacity to host exhibitors throughout the fair. According to the Wisconsin State Fair Organization, criteria for the location of the new State Fair fairgrounds were that it had to be at least 100 acres in size and, quote unquote, located within a 10 mile radius of the Milwaukee County Courthouse and must cost $150,000 or less, just under $5 million today. Pictured is an 1892 Milwaukee Journal article discussing the start of building construction at the new State Fair Park. In 1892, railroad access to the new fairgrounds was also very important. The Chicago and Northwestern Railway built a depot near the south entrance of State Fair Park, while the Milwaukee Road built one near the north entrance. Between 100 and 1000 CE, or AD, ancient Native Americans, today known as the Woodlands people, built a series of mounds at what is now State Fair Park. They were built along Honey Creek, near the present-day intersection of South 84th Street and Greenfield Avenue. Only two of these mounds have survived to the present day, and they are now enclosed by the Department of Natural Resources Pavilion. Those mounds are included on this map of archaeological sites in Wisconsin, noted with the number one. This map was created by John O. Pinchard and was published in the Milwaukee Journal in 1978. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Native Americans living in Wisconsin would often stage encampments at state fairs. Pictured are Native Americans, possibly at the Wisconsin State Fair, in this undated photograph. Native peoples would also demonstrate traditional crafts and play lacrosse at the fair. In 1894, a smallpox scare reduced attendance, but by the end of the 1890s, the fair had rebounded with the construction of several new buildings. In 1898, State Fair Park, State fair Park was temporarily home to Camp Harvey, which was used to train National Guard soldiers in preparation for deployment in the Spanish-American War. Pictured is an 1898 Milwaukee Journal article about State Fair Park being used as Camp Harvey. During the 1890s, the State Fair remained scheduled in September. In 1893, the year after the first fair in West Dallas, the State Fair was canceled for the fourth time due to the projected loss of attendance caused by the World's Columbian Exposition, or World's Fair, being held in nearby Chicago. Pictured as an excerpt from an 1893 article in the Milwaukee Journal discussing the State Fair question, quote unquote, about whether hosting the State Fair in direct competition with the World's Fair in Chicago would be worthwhile. In 1895, a college football game between the University of Wisconsin and Northwestern University was played at the fairgrounds for the unofficial title of Champion of the West, pictured as coverage of that game in an 1895 issue of the Milwaukee Journal. This game occurred one year before the founding of the Big Ten Conference, originally known as the Western Conference, which was formed in 1896. During the 1900s, the development of the new fairgrounds in West Dallas took center stage as new buildings were constructed and electricity made its debut. The fair was held during mid-September during this decade. In 1904, the introduction of electric lighting allowed for extended hours at the fair. The following year, 1905, a new livestock exhibition building was opened, pictured here which helped to increase attendance at the State Fair by exhibitors from around the Midwest. In 1907, the Dairy Cattle Building was constructed. Today, it's the oldest building still in existence at State Fair Park. The mile-long racetrack at Wisconsin State Fair Park, which is now commonly called the Milwaukee Mile, was originally constructed as a horse racing track. Harness racing was especially popular here. Pictured as a harness race at State Fair Park from substantially later, 
from 1940. Pictured here is a poster advertising the 1900 Wisconsin State Fair. Note the prominence of the harness racing illustration at the top. In 1901, a railroad locomotive collision was staged as the main grandstand entertainment for that year. In 1903, the first automobile race was held at the Milwaukee Mile. Before World War II, both horse racing and auto racing took place at the racetrack. So ground screws would al alternatively soften the dirt track for horse races and then compact it for auto racing. Still active as a racetrack today, the Milwaukee Mile remains the oldest operating speedway anywhere in the world. For comparison, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway was opened in 1909, six years later. Also in 1909, sitting President William Howard Taft visited the Wisconsin State Fair, giving a speech at the grandstand and even judging cattle. In the 19-teens, aircraft, such as this one pictured at the fair in 1911, automobiles, and motorcycles were popular attractions at the Wisconsin State Fair. The fair remained in mid-September. In 1910, the year Wilbur and Orville Wright visited, the fair held airship races alongside auto racing. In 1913, there were even automobile polo matches. Before American involvement in World War I, the fair held novelty races pitting aircraft against cars. In 1915, a new grandstand was constructed at State Fair Park. In September 1910, the Wright Airplane Company brought a new Model B aircraft to the State Fair with pilot Arch Hoxie at the controls. He proceeded to conduct a flying demonstration. The next year, 1911, aviator Lincoln Beachy flew his airplane over Milwaukee after taking off from State Fair Park, pictured here, flying over the Milwaukee Mile. Air shows and aerial demonstrations were staples of the entertainment schedule at the State Fair in the 19-teens and 20s with these events typically taking, taking place over the Milwaukee Mile, as seen here. In 1912, an airfield and a flying school were established near the north end of the fairgrounds. In 1919, the Lawson L-2 airliner, pictured here, was built inside an exhibit hall at the fairgrounds. While only one prototype was ever built and the L-2 was ultimately unsuccessful, it was nonetheless the first commercial airliner ever constructed in the United States. It was also a major reason why Albert Muchka described the State Fair as instrumental in the development of aviation in Wisconsin, quote unquote. The 1920s were most memorable for new food traditions at the State Fair. Pictured as a poster for the 1924 State Fair, which prominently features depictions of vegetables, cheese, and butter. The scheduling of the fair was moved up to late August during the 1920s. Food became a fixture at the Wisconsin State Fair as the event became more popular in the early 20th century. Prior to this, it was not a major part of the fair, although as early as the late 19th century, West Dallas churches began to operate food halls at the fair. Pictured here is an aerial view of the 1921 State Fair taken by noted aerial photographer Albert F. Topher. In 1922, Henry Ford paid a visit to the Wisconsin State Fair. The following year, 1923, Fun City was created with 64 new amusement park rides and concessions located around the existing old mill. In 1924, the first cream puff was sold at the fair by the Wisconsin Bakers Association. It is now more strongly associated with the fair and has been available for more years consecutively than any other fair food. Pictured as cream puff preparation from considerably later, circa 1950. In recent years, over 400,000 cream puffs have been eaten, eaten by fairgoers each year. The cream puff pavilion, which was built in 1909 as the dairy building, has remained baking and selling cream puffs to this day. The 1930s were highlighted by professional football games at the state fairgrounds. The fair remained in late August during that decade. Between 1934 and 1951, the Green Bay Packers played games at the fairgrounds, using the grass infield of the Milwaukee Mile and the grandstand along its main straightaway as a football stadium. In 1939, the fairgrounds played host to the NFL championship game between the Packers and the New York Giants. More than 32,000 spectators witnessed the Packers win convincingly, 27 to nothing. 
pictured his coverage of the game in a 1939 issue of the Milwaukee Journal. The stadium, despite being a racetrack, de developed its own identity and was nicknamed the Dairy Bowl. It was even dedicated during halftime of the NFL championship game with the breaking of a bottle of milk in a manner evocative of how ships are christened. In 1931, due to the Great Depression, the State Fair reduced its annual budget. Pictured here is a group photograph of the Milwaukee County 4-H Clothing Club Championship in 1931. The fair also reduced its, its admission fee from 50 cents to 25 cents in 1933, equivalent to a, a reduction from over $11 to less than $6 in 2023 figures. In 1932, the World's Fair Blimp, which was serving the Century of Progress International Exposition, or World's Fair, in Chicago, carried passengers from, from the Wisconsin State Fair in West Dallas to the lakefront in Milwaukee for $3, over $65 today. In 1932, Millie's Italian Sausage became the first permanent food stand to open at the fair. It remains in operation to this day. And in 1936, the State Fair celebrated the centennial anniversary of the Wisconsin Territory. In 1935, the West Dallas Skating Club was established for high-level speed skaters, foreshadowing high-level speed skating at State Fair Park. Pictured is a 1935 story about the club hosting an upcoming skating meet in the Milwaukee Sentinel. Initially, the skating club was a department of the West Dallas Recreation Department. One of its early members was Alan Petrie, the world champion in indoor speed skating in 1934. Pictured here is television equipment on display during the 1932 State Fair. Pictured is Dining Hall Street, quote unquote, lined by food vendors on both sides at the 1936 State Fair. Note that most of the dining halls at the time were still run by local churches, as had become common in the late 19th century. This, this photograph is by Lyle Oberweis. Pictured here are entries in the working horse competition during the 1937 State Fair. Note that this event is being held on the dirt track of the Milwaukee Mile with spectators sitting in the grandstand. Pictured here is a staged car crash, part of the entertainment at the 1938 State Fair. Note the similarity to the staged locomotive crash held at the 1901 State Fair 37 years earlier. Support for American involvement in World War II and the Wisconsin Centennial in 1948 dominated the fair in the 1940s. It was held in mid-August during this decade. In 1940, prior to American involvement in the war, opening day at the State Fair was declared Aviation and Defense Day celebrated by 75 planes flying over State Fair Park in formation. Pictured as the Midway during the 1940 State Fair. In 1942, a single day attendance record of over 124,000 people was set. That year's fair theme was Food for Victory, which focused on home front production and conservation efforts during World War II. The 1945 Wisconsin State Fair was canceled for the fifth time in fair history ultimately because of the Federal Office of Defense Transportation, or ODT. Starting in 1942, the ODT had been recommending the avoidance of non-essential travel to state and county fairs across the country. They advocated against using precious resources for such trips by using the slogan, is this trip necessary, quote unquote, in 1945, the ODT began seriously considering an outright ban on fairs across the country. It ultimately ordered the Wisconsin State Fair to operate on a county fair scale. And when the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture refused to do this, the state of Wisconsin canceled the 1945 fair. Pictured is a 1945 Milwaukee Journal article announcing the cancellation of the fair that year. The following year, 1946, the State Fair returned for the first official statewide welcome home event for military veterans anywhere in the country, which was held on its opening day. After World War II, horse racing at the fairgrounds lost popularity and was ultimately replaced entirely by auto racing, including championship car, now IndyCar, midget, and stock car races, pictured as an auto race on the dirt track. 
1948, when Duke Dinsmore was thrown out of his car during the IndyCar race at the Milwaukee Mile, fellow driver Rex Mays stopped, got out of his own car, and pulled Dinsmore out of danger. Mays himself was subsequently killed in a race at the Del Mar Fairgrounds in San Diego. One of the IndyCar races at the Milwaukee Mile, as it typically held two races per year in this era, was then subsequently renamed the Rex Mays Classic in his honor, bearing that name between 1950 and 1987. Pictured here is motorcycle racing at the 1940 State Fair, also taking place at the Milwaukee Mile. In 1945, an ice rink at the fairgrounds was used to host the Holiday on Ice performance. Temporary outdoor ice rinks would later be used for both figure skating shows and appearances by the Milwaukee Admirals ice hockey team. By 1949, the West Dallas Skating Club's speed skaters had won so many titles and the city had produced so many elite athletes that West Dallas began to be called the skating capital of Wisconsin. Every year during this era, the club hosted the Great Lakes Speed Skating Championships. Pictured here is an undated photograph of the later Wisconsin Olympic ice rink on the state fairgrounds, which opened in 1966. Pictured here is the program for the horse show at the 1941 State Fair. In 1948, the fair celebrated the centennial of Wisconsin statehood and was arguably the biggest year ever for the State Fair, quote unquote, according to Chris Molina of Wisconsin Public Radio. The grandstand show that year was called the Show of the Century, and it included singing, dancing, acrobatics, and even a water ballet. Prior to the 1948 fair, the entire fairgrounds were renovated and provided with a facelift to give it a more modern appearance, as demonstrated by the photograph accompanying this 1948 Milwaukee Journal article touting that year's centennial fair as the greatest show in Wisconsin history, quote unquote. The 1948 State Fair was also an unusually long 23 days, lengthened in celebration of the centennial, and it drew nearly 1.8 million fairgoers. This is a record for total attendance that still stands to this day, despite the cost of admission being a relatively high for the time, 50 cents, just over $6 today. Pictured is a view of the Midway at the 1949 State Fair. This photograph was taken by Lyle Oberweis. The 1950s were, domin were dominated by the growing importance of concerts and performances by nationally recognized entertainers. The fair moved back slightly to late August during this decade. In 1951, a new exhibit on atomic energy debuted at the fair in the Wisconsin at Work Building. Pictured here is an aerial view of the 1951 State Fair. The 1952 State Fair featured chariot races with replica Roman chariots and mock battles staged by soldiers of the Fifth Army. Major shows held during that decade included Hopalong Cassidy in 1955, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans in 1958, program from that show pictured here, and Tennessee Ernie Ford, as well as both the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey circuses in 1959. The 1958 Rogers and Evans show drew, drew over 112,000 people to the grandstand. In 1954, the Milwaukee Mile was paved with asphalt, but continued to host automobile races. In 1959, the Milwaukee Falcons, a semi-professional ice hockey team, began playing their home games at the Coliseum on the fairgrounds. Pictured here is a roller coaster at the State Fair, circa 1955. Pictured is a view of the Midway at the State Fair, circa 1958. This photograph was taken by Henry Sonneman. Auto racing and the continued popularity of grandstand shows were the most notable events of the 1960s. The fair moved back up in the schedule to mid-August during this decade. In 1966, Mario Andretti won the 100-lap IndyCar race at the Milwaukee Mile. Pictured here is a 1969 stock car race at the Milwaukee Mile, photographed by Ray Prey. Notable grandstand performers during the 1960s included the Three Stooges in 1960, Bob Hope and Perry Como in 1966, Johnny Carson and the Cow Sills in 1968, and West Alice native Liberace, The Supremes, and Johnny Cash, 
all in 1969. Reflecting the appeal of the ongoing space race, in 1963, both a Jetman rocket belt demonstration and a moon base exhibit were popular attractions at that year's fair. Pictured is the 1967 State Fair program depicting the grandstand and fireworks. In 1966, a new outdoor speed skating track was built at the fairgrounds called the Wisconsin Olympic Ice Rink. This served as one of the most important speed skating tracks in the country until it was replaced by the Pettit National Ice Center in 1992. Pictured is an undated Milwaukee Sentinel photograph of an unidentified speed skater competing at the Olympic ice rink. Pictured here is a map of the 1964 state fair. Note the parade route marked by the red path. In 1968, state fair officials and the Blue Ribbon Sale of Champions Foundation created the governor's Blue Ribbon Livestock Auction, which is open to youth at the fair. The sitting Wisconsin governor still ceremonially oversees the, the auction, and the funds raised from all the winning bids fund scholarships for students through the Wisconsin 4-H Foundation. Pictured as Susie Height competing in the 1986 cattle competition with her Hereford heifer. Pictured as a tractor pulling fairgoers in a wagon that advertises free grandstand shows daily, quote unquote. This photo is from circa 1969. Note the grandstands in the background, photographed by Ray Prey. The 1970s were most notable for the development of the grounds, as well as a new logo, pictured here. The time of the year for the fair remained in August. In 1972, the still current multicolor snowflake logo, as seen here, was created to symbolize year-round use of the fairgrounds. In 1973, just a year after the new logo was created, there was even a snowmobile race held at the Milwaukee Mile in the winter. In 1970, the Central Park area of the fairgrounds was enhanced with both entertainment and ice cream concessions. A new 1,000-seat amphitheater was constructed for 1974. In 1976, it was joined by the new Coliseum, and in 1979, by the horse barn and sheep barn. Pictured here is a sheep being shorn in 1978 in, the in a Milwaukee Journal photograph. Grandstand entertainers during the decade included Three Dog Night and The Spinners in 1975, and Casey and the Sunshine Band and Willie Nelson in 1979. Pictured here is a view of the new Coliseum, circa 1977, the year after it was constructed. It was photographed here by Ray Prey. In 1979, the scheduling of the state fair was moved up to the first week in August so as not to interfere with the start of the school year. After, and in part due to this change, average annual attendance to the fair has increased from about 800,000 to over 1 million people in recent years. Pictured is Grandstand Avenue at the 1971 state fair before the scheduling change and increase in attendance. The 1980s were dominated by new, larger foods and animal mascots at the fair. The fair continued to be held in early August, where it has remained to this day. Pictured as a concession stand at the 1983 State Fair. In 1984, the world's largest baked Alaska was served at the fair. And in 1989, a 40,000-pound block of cheddar cheese known as the Belle of Wisconsin concluded a national promotional tour with a stop at the fair. Due to the increased popularity of the Wisconsin State Fair, the state purchased more land and built more permanent buildings on the fairgrounds, mostly for food and beverage service as well as retail, but it also constructed a few new administration buildings. After this expansion in food service, many notable Milwaukee restaurants, including Major Goolsby's, Miss Katie's Diner, and Saz's, have begun, have begun serving their specialties at the fair, cheeseburgers, pulled pork sandwiches, and roasted chicken. Pictured is, an, is a 1984 aerial view of the state fair, showing many of the various food vendors. Deep fried foods are also common, and deep fried cheese curds, pickles, and Oreos have all become crowd favorites. Throughout the 1980s, pun-heavy slogans and the billboards made using them were employed to advertise the state fair all over Wisconsin. 
Some of the most memorable slogans included Days of Swine and Roses, Check Out the Chicks, and Here's Looking at You, Kid, with you spelled E-W-E, as in a female sheep. In 1981, mascots Willie P. Bacon and Violet the Cow debuted, and in 1986, the first pig races were held at the State Fair. They remain one of its most popular attractions today. Pictured here is a pig race in 2022. Pictured here is the big slide, circa 1980s. This slide is still a fixture at the State Fair today. New baking facilities in the dairy building were constructed in 1995. These reduced wait times and increased the number of cream puffs sold to over a quarter million a year. In 1999, cream puffs were available for pickup via a drive through for the first time. Pictured here are trays of cream puffs waiting to be served in the Cream Puff Pavilion in 2022. Built in 1992, just north of the fairgrounds and just across the city line in Milwaukee to replace the Wisconsin Olympic Ice Rink, the Pettit National Ice Center is an Olympic caliber rink that hosts national and international competitions and serves as a training for facility for Olympians and Olympic hopefuls. For example, just this past January, the track hosted U.S. Speed Skating's Long Track Championships and Junior Championships, and it often hosts Olympic trials, most recently in January 2022. Pictured is the Men's Elimination Mass Start Competition from the 2023 National Championships at the Pettit Center. The facility also serves the community by providing skating lessons and rink time for both ice skating and hockey. The biggest event of the 1990s was the centennial celebration of State Fair Park in 1992, which helped to lay the groundwork for the evolution of the fairgrounds and the fair itself into the new millennium. Celebrating the 100th anniversary of the State Fair's permanent location at State Fair Park in West Dallas, the opening ceremonies of the 1992 fair included the filling of a time capsule. Special merchandise was also sold for the centennial. Among the most prominent musicians to perform at the fair that year were Alabama, the Beach Boys, and Martina McBride. Pictured here is an advertisement for the 1992 State Fair, featuring a vintage-inspired design that was published in the Milwaukee Sentinel. Food became more and more important to the fair over the course of the 2000s, as attendance grew and the grounds developed accordingly. In 2009, various foods on a stick were especially popular including cherry pie on a stick, chocolate-covered bacon on a stick, and fried peanut butter and jelly on a stick. Pictured here is the Scani Slugger from 2022. It is alternating pieces of bratwurst and cheese curds on a stick, deep-fried in cruller dough, topped with a combination of Dijon mustard and mayonnaise, and finished with German-style red cabbage. The second-place finisher in the 2022 Sporfies, the State Fair's annual food competition, it was created by the Miller Lite Sports Bar and Grill. The grounds at State Fair Park continued to be improved as attendance, as attendance grew in the 2000s. In 2000, a new main gate was built at the north end of the fairgrounds. In 2003, a new two-level livestock barn with a milking parlor was constructed. Pictured here is the milking parlor in 2022. Other updates to the fairgrounds in time for the 2003 State Fair included a new exposition center located at the south end of the fairgrounds, a new grandstand at the Milwaukee Mile, and several new buildings in the Ag Village. A power outage on August 4, 2000 ne necessitated the evacuation of 60,000 fairgoers. Also in 2000, the reserve grand champion steer sold for a record-breaking $29,000 and over 367,000 original cream puffs were sold to fair attendees. Pictured here is a cream puff that was served in 2022. The Olympic torch relay for the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City included a stretch running through Milwaukee and West Dallas, which included a leg run by Olympian Bonnie Blair, one of the most successful American speed skaters of all time. Blair began skating in West Dallas during her childhood and later trained at the Pettit Center in preparation for the 1994 Winter Olympics. Pictured here is a portrait of Blair taken by Wikimedia Commons user Yui Fan, freely licensed under the CC BY 3.0 license. 
The 20 teens saw even bigger records for both attendance and cream puffs sold, as well as the debut of the Wonder Fair Ferris wheel. In 2012, the Midway was converted into Spin City, an amusement area featuring independent rides and games run by the State Fair itself, replacing the previous traveling carnival. Pictured here is a Matterhorn or Flying Bob style ride on the left and a fun house at Spin City during the 2022 State Fair. In 2013, the fair was attended by 1 million fairgoers for the first time in its modern 11-day format. In 2019, the fair drew just over 1.1 million people, its highest attendance in the modern era. A juried competition called the Sporkies also debuted that year to recognize the best new foods debuted at that year's fair and in subsequent years. Pictured as Slim McGinn's with their Sporkies finalist 13-foot tall trophy advertising their success in the competition at the 2022 State Fair. In 2011, the Wisconsin State Fair created both the world's largest cheese sculpture and the world's largest cream puff, which were both certified by the Guinness Book of World Records. The record setting cream puff was seven and a half inches tall, 38 inches wide, and weighed 126 pounds. In 2019, in addition to setting a new modern day total attendance record, there were five individual days that each beat previous single day attendance records. Repeated broken attendance records in the 20 teens were in large part driven by the main stage headliners who are scheduled for concerts in conjunction with the fair. The fair has drawn a diverse group of musicians during this period, including Casting Crowns, Foreigner, Whitney Houston, Demi Lovato, Reba McIntyre, John Mellencamp, Sean Mendez, Lake Shelton, Neil Young, and Frank Zappa, pictured as a photo of the main stage during a performance from the Wisconsin State Fair website. In 2017, the Wonder Fair wheel, pictured here in 2022, made its debut at the Wisconsin State Fair. It is the largest traveling Ferris wheel in North America. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic caused the sixth and most recent cancellation of the Wisconsin State Fair. The fair returned the next year, 2021. As of 2022, the State Fair provides numerous act daily activities to fairgoers, including agricultural and horticultural demonstrations, concerts, dance and other performances, milking demonstrations, pig races, and thrill rides. Pictured here is an aerial view of the 2022 State Fair taken from the Wonder Fair Wheel. Recent fairs also feature local musicians who perform on small stages that can be found throughout the fairgrounds. In the last few decades, the Milwaukee Mile has been running races independently throughout the summer months instead of hosting them in conjunction with the state fair. Here is a table showing how the Wisconsin State Fair has evolved over the decades. Starting in the 1850s, it shows month or month scheduled for the fair, length of the fair and days, cost of an admission ticket, and adjusted cost in 2023 dollars for the decades through the 19 teens. This is a continuation of the previous table documenting the 1920s through the 1980s. Finally, this is the conclusion of the previous table showing the 1990s through the 20 teens. Thank you for attending my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? You can unmute or type your question in the chat if you have a question. I am not seeing any questions, but Kathy says, great presentation, Michael. Does anybody have any questions? Do you see that question, Michael? Yes, I do. 
Thank you, Lisa. Um, the question is, where can we find more resources, especially photos from the State Fair, particularly the 1950s? Uh, we have files of photographs on the State Fair here in the Research Library at MCHS. Um, the photos that we have really cover the 1920s or the 1930s through the 1980s very well. So mid-century photos, especially from the 50s, are, are very well represented or, or really overrepresented in our collections. We don't have much from the early days and we don't have much since the 80s. Um, but yes, for, for photos, yes, I would highly recommend coming to the research library. Uh, you can either make an appointment to, to, um, to search in person uh, or, or we can do remote research um, via, um, via, via the internet. Yes, and I see your follow-up question. Are they possibly digitally available for those out of state? Some of them have been digitized. We have not had them, we don't have a platform yet to put them online. We're hoping to join Recollection Wisconsin um, this fall to start putting uh, groups of our photos online. However, we can provide them via email or Dropbox as part of remote research which we can do for uh, researchers and patrons who are out of state. Um, in terms of other resources, uh, we, do, we do have a state fair collection, uh, manuscripts with programs, um, things like that in it. Uh, and then we also have access to the digital database of the Milwaukee Journal and Sentinel, which is very useful for researching individual state fairs, uh, including for the 1950s. Did you have another question, Michael? Ooh, when did the flower exhibit start? I don't know, Kathy, unfortunately. I'm not not familiar with um, the flower exhibit, unfortunately. Any other questions? Well, I guess that's it, Michael. We'll go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks everybody for attending today and thank you, Michael, for your time. We have recorded this lecture and we'll make it available to everyone on YouTube next week. And we will host another virtual lunch and learn in September, topic to be determined. Um, watch for more information on our social media channels and on our website. Thanks so much for attending and uh, happy Summerfest and happy summer. Bye-bye. Thank you.